year. The Celtics will receive three first round picks, including one next year, which is one of the deepest projected drafts in over a decade. Boston also gets five players, including Gerald Wallace and Chris Humphreys expiring contract, as well as Marshawn Brooks. NBA insider Chris Broussard joins us this morning. And Chris, two different mindsets here. One team doesn't care about writing a luxury tax check, and the other is starting from scratch. When you talk about value, was this the best deal the Celtics could have made? Well, look, they did get some draft picks. Now, those picks, some of them at least, will not be very good picks because the Nets team should be one of the top teams in the league. Uh, so those picks will be low. But you got young talent like Marshawn Brooks, um, and, you know, you're rebuilding. This is what you want. You got assets. So draft picks, young players, this is how you start over and rebuild. And next year, remember, that draft, 2014, is supposed to be special. So assuming the Celtics struggle, they could be in position to get one of those top lottery picks and then maybe get a potential star uh, for the future. Now, this is what you also have to remember. Kevin Garnett with the no trade clause, there were only a certain number of teams he would go to. There are only a certain number of teams that could take Paul Pierce along with him that would entice Garnett to go to those teams. So you really didn't have 29 other teams you could deal with. You had a select few. You had teams that could contend for a conference championship, and you had teams that could also make a trade for Paul Pierce to appease Garnett and get him to waive his no-trade clause. So considering all of these factors, I think the Celtics did okay. You know, they had to take back the long-term deal of Gerald Wallace. But overall, they did okay. All right, let's go to the other side. The Nets projected starting five now. Pierce, KG, Joe Johnson, Brooke Lopez, and Darren Williams. And Jason Kidd is the head coach. How much of a title contender is Brooklyn right now? Well, I think they're going to be growing pains. I think they're going to be a very good team. Um, I certainly wouldn't put them over Miami right now, but they do have the experience, and they do have players that all have, have often given Miami trouble. Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, when they were in Boston, they gave the Nets a lot of problems. You know, remember two years ago, took them to seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals, even though that Boston team was virtually a shell of its former self, but their experience, their savvy, their toughness, their intelligence enabled them to give Miami some problems. Also, you've got the size of Brooke Lopez. We know Miami has problems with size. You know, we saw that against Indiana with Roy Hibbert. So if Garnett can really help the Nets and Pierce become mentally tougher, they were a mentally weak team last year. If they, along with Jason Kidd, can make the Nets mentally tougher and, of course, stay healthy because these guys are old, uh, I think they could potentially be the second best team in the East and then really take Miami to a tough uh, playoff series in, in the conference finals or so. So I think they're a legitimate conference contender. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and let's not forget the Bulls getting Derrick Rose back and then Danny Granger with the Pacers. So the East is stacked here if you look at the top four teams. And you mentioned growing pains here. What will be Jason Kidd's biggest challenge here with this squad? Well, certainly he has the respect of all of these players. Um, Jason Kidd is arguably, or was arguably last year, the most respected player in the league. So that helps. But at the same time, these are your contemporaries. Uh, it, it, this is it's not the same, obviously, as being a player coach, but it's about as close as you could get to that in today's NBA. Uh, and you wonder if at times, you know, the coach has to, you know, bench players or make, you know, substitutions or, you know, just get on a player if he's struggling or not playing well or not doing the correct things. You wonder how those things will go uh, when you're talking about a guy that's been a friend to Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Darren Williams, uh, and, and even a teammate with, with these guys. So uh, it's, I, I, it'll be interesting, that dynamic. Uh, it was already going to be interesting with Darren Williams, but now you bring in KG and Pierce and Jason Terry, another former teammate with Jason Kidd. So that's the only question mark, but I would the respect will definitely be there, though. Let's go back to the Celtics situation. All right, the big three is gone. Doc Rivers is gone. 
Rajon Rondo must be looking around and wondering about his future. Is he next? And he's coming off an ACL injury. Could he be the next player moved by Danny Ainge? Well, you would think he'd be tougher to move right now because of the injury. You know, people will want to see, likely want to see how he comes back from that. And also, we know that Rajon um, has had his issues uh, with Doc Rivers, with the Celtics organization in general, with teammates. Uh, so he's a different type of personality, and so that could possibly lower his trade value as well. I think what you'll see is the Celtics try to see if Rajon can really be the full-fledged leader of this team. There have been mixed results at this point. Obviously, a great player, the best player on that team, even last year with these veterans there. But the question is, how will he lead, especially now that you've got all of these young players not only by example on the court, but with his personality and his words. So I think the Celtics will want to see how that goes before they totally decide let's trade him.